back to the slide on speed. Sure. Can I provide a comment? Yes, please do. Yeah, that one right there. Oh, sorry. That one? Yeah, that's perfect. So one of the pin traps I see, because I do SEO as well, I want to provide a little context for speed. It's because speed itself is a very small search factor. It's usability is a huge thing. But like in this case right here, where you see load time, 2.2 seconds, that's great. But people get kind of hung up on the C, on the performance rate, right? People start freaking out about that. And I just want to like provide you know a little context that Look, if your site's loading in two seconds, that's kind of screaming compared to like what the page speed ranking factor is kind of aimed for. Like if you're loading around 10 seconds to 20 seconds, that's a big deal, right? So if you're like seeing page speed times around three or two or three seconds, you're doing really great. And that performance rate, you don't need to get hung up on it so much. Yeah, I think that's one of the big challenges with an SEO is sort of um, this big question of, okay, I want to sit down, I'm going to allocate my time, my resources, my budget. Yes. Where am I going to allocate that time? And so I can put my website into some kind of site scanning tool, whether it's for speed or on-page optimization. And I'm typically given things like a scorecard or red flags and orange flags and green dots. And so there are um, all of these metrics out there, and it can be quite overwhelming. And the takeaway from that feeling of overwhelming tends to be people either saying, ah, I'm just not even going to go there, um, so taking no action, um, or um, you know, to occasionally going down the wrong path and not being able to weigh out where am I going to actually be able to have the most impact. And so, you know, I think a lot of the topics we talked about today um, are some of those areas where you can have the most impact and then kind of really trying to think through what you're getting back. And if you see a page load time that's in the, the good range, um, in a performance range that's maybe just in the average range, um, yes, there is some incremental improvement in that performance grade that you can go after, but your time may be better spent um, on developing really great content for your website or something like that. So you need to, to weigh the pluses and minuses of your actions. Go ahead. Is there any benefit uh, to using things like Yelp and other uh, avenues that are going to ensure if you out there other methods to find you, but that the Google Cell Index or kind of they do. So um, Google collects information about your business via your website. You can kind of think about that as the hub of your SEO efforts. And I can say um, I am the best artist in Maui all day long on my website. And until they hear that echoed elsewhere on the web, they're not going to have as much trust about that. And part of that echo comes from the local search space in this case. So when you talk about something like Yelp or yellowpages.com, um, the, the strategy I recommend within local search is start with Google My Business and Google Maps as sort of the hub of your SEO local efforts. Get that listing created and then actually use automation, use ongoing subscription-based services to try to push that information out across the broader web. And so if you can get your local business information, your name, your address, your phone number, your hours of operation, consistent um, on the 100 plus different local websites that are out there, kind of directory oriented, Google is going to trust, that's going to be a ranking signal for your organic search listing, but also a ranking signal for your Google Maps listing, um, because they're going to say, okay, I have pretty good trust that this is the right address and the right information, but if I see that in 100 different places, exactly as I understand it, I'm going to have a lot of trust. And if I see that mixed up, different brands, even like um, just, you know, one has um, limited at the end or like LCC at the end of um, the name and the brand and one place it doesn't, that's going to provide that just little bit of um, question for the search engines and, and with that question mark is, is an incremental area of, of opportunity in SEO. Go ahead. Sorry, I think we have time for both, so. Thanks. Um, I've worked with clients in the travel and tourism industry as well and uh, where I'm struggling is, is that um, many of them, they are small hotels or they are investors in uh, Airbnb and VRBO properties, but their own websites with deep spot on domain names and robust content are being pushed way down the results by Airbnb's own results for their properties, TripAdvisor um, and a variety of other massive conglomerate sites that still generate a certain amount of traffic to them, but 
we're missing out on the opportunity to, to leverage those click-throughs through like our meta descriptions and that kind of thing. Is there any way to compete when you're the real deal? That's a really good question, and we I work with a lot of people in the travel and tourism space as well, and we've seen the same trend. In some ways, the SEO game for them has gotten harder over the years um, via these big um, websites like a VRBO, um, and their properties are listed there, but they'd really rather the booking come in directly through their website, and that's where that local pack, I put a lot of emphasis for those clients in trying to, to rec um, rank really well in the local search results because it's actually, in, in many cases, displayed even above organic. Uh, and, and, I, and I want to clarify, we're not actually trying to, we use Airbnb for booking. We exactly, it's Airbnb. another way so to get it. If someone clicks through on those links, it's awesome, but we're trying to help people gain more insight into the property itself and, and give people that, oh, hey, that sounds like something I would really want to click through and explore when the listings from the others, aside from rate, rankings, really don't give you that much. Exactly, and so the downside to the local pack, those three local search results, is you don't get a lot of that brand building. You get like very concrete information. This is the name of the business, and the hours, and you can click through the website or get directions. You don't really get to control that brand voice messaging. And so this is that concept of holistic SEO, um, trying to get sort of your listing there and getting the organic listing to appear. Um, and typically, if people see your business in you know two to three spaces on that search results page, maybe they've been into AdWords, they're in the local pack, and even if they're pretty far down in the organic search results on that page, um, you know, below the PRBOs, they get a ton of great brand voice coming through, where I may read the meta description down here, but click through via the ad. Um, but together, um, I, I created a lot of trust that my business is perfectly well matched to be in that keyword space. Yes? Um, the first tip, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, What's your favorite or the most recommended tool for doing that? I think you have four of Yeah, I can go back but, to those. Um, if you were to need one, which one would you start with? A little bit of it depends on um, budget. So some tools are free and some tools are paid. So that might be an influencer. What I would um, do is be consistent. So don't um, research one keyword in one tool and another keyword in another tool and then compare those two numbers. You need apples to apples recommendations. Um, the Google AdWords Keyword Planner is free. You have to have a Google account. It's more associated with AdWords, though, um, than it is with SEO. So yes, it's good free data, um, but do take it with a grain of salt because it is powered by um, the data that they're giving to advertisers that are going to go and bid into that keyword space. My favorite free tool is probably the Moz Keyword Explorer. Um, I think they do a really great job. I struggle with it for um, small keyword space businesses, so if you're a small local business and there are only 100 searches per month potentially related to your business, in Moz I typically see them give me the zeros. And I know their search volume. If, if you see a keyword appear in the Google search suggest, somebody out there is looking um, for that phrase. That's how Google powers the Google search suggest is actually by user behavior. Um, and then you see the zero in the tool. You kind of have a mismatch, and you might need to go use a, a bigger um, keyword research tool to, to try to get at that data. Um, SEM Rush, SpyFu, these are great tools. Google Trends can give you some big pictures and some seasonal um, spikes. And then um, WP SEO Hub has an integrated keyword research tool that then lets you add keywords to lists and start instantly um, tracking performance over time. Sure. What are your thoughts on all those multiple platforms that provide uh, sometimes different results for your site? So you have Moz, you have SEM Rush, you have Serpbook, you have Majestic. Do you pick one and go? Do you compare them all on a monthly basis? That's a really good question. The SEO software space right now is really crowded um, with a lot of great, powerful tools. And it's really hard to separate sort of great data um, from the noise and then take action. So I do think it depends um, what tool is best for you. It depends on sort of what you're trying to get at it out of that tool. If you're a local business um, you know, engaged in a, a relatively small SEO campaign, you probably don't need something as aggressive as a paid subscription um, to something like Moz um, or SEM Rush. You may be able to use either free tools or things that are built a little bit more for a local business. 
Um, if you're an SEO agency, um, depending on what kind of data or, or if you're a developer and you're trying to get after um, that, you just have to kind of try the pre-trials and, and really just like analytics, Google Analytics, which is free, sort of say, okay, all this data is great, but it's what I extract out of it, what action I take, um, that's actually what matters, and try to kind of um, evaluate the tools based on, on that concept of um, all the tools in the world aren't going to influence your SEO rankings if you don't actually take, take steps after based on the data. I'll uh, probably have time for one question and then I'll let you guys go. Go ahead. Um, I, I always think that I should know what causes this, but when you have a search result like the one for your company that creates the nested relationship of pages, subpages to the home page, and then for other sites, uh, you see all of those pages that are still under the same domain listed individually. What, what, what influences whether it displays one way or the other? Yes, that's a really good question. So this is sort of what, you know, from a brand result you're looking for um, in the search results. We have a paid ad, um, and then we have the um, seven site links, that's all free, and then the brand box over on the side. And so the question is, how do you get your brand listing to kind of look like this? And there's no one trick to doing it. You don't check a box in the Google Search Console that says, yes, I'd like site links. Um, please you know, lay it out, and here's what I'd like to show. But rather, be a really um, solid site architecture is one of the influences, so that they understand the hierarchy of pages, um, solid URLs, things like that. The on-page optimization, the quality of the content, um, these are all things that you can do to influence um, trying to get this type of a result. And then they take user behavior. So they start to see like what people are actually looking for. Um, you know, I probably wouldn't have this in our search result if I had the choice, but apparently that's getting clicked through quite a bit. And so Google is keeping that in what their minds are the seven most likely first paid visits are for our website. You can't, um, remove, you can't remove. You can request you something get removed, but you can't request that it gets added. Um, and so that's that's definitely a factor. And typically, you only get the site results if um, they're so confident that the search query matches your website that closely that they're going to give you that much real estate. Otherwise, they want to kind of keep it open um, and, and maybe let some of your competitors or like your Facebook page or something um, rise higher on the page. Awesome. No problem. All right, I'm going to pass the mic.